What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Finally back with a review from Vinegar Syndrome. It's been like forever. I actually watched this movie like a week ago and just haven't gotten around to doing the review. So we're going to remedy that right now. I was trying to find, a, find the word there. Uh, hope you guys are all doing well, by the way. It is Monday at the time of this recording and it's uh, hotter than crap outside. It's so much moisture in the air. It feels like a fucking rainforest out there. And uh, just trying to stay indoors and keep cool as much as possible. I'm out there like five minutes and just drenched in sweat. Anyways, you guys don't care about all that. You guys are here to see Cloak and Dagger and hear my thoughts on it, right? Uh, before I get started, as usual, guys, if you would, hit that like, hit that subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, follow me on all the external links, all that good stuff, the TikTok, Instagram, all that. Uh, yeah. So, Cloak and Dagger, a 1984, right, uh, film here, starring Henry Thomas, who is best known for, like, his role in E.T., uh, The Quest, a.k.a. Frog, frog Dreaming. <laughs> if I could say my words, it, man, it's going to be a, a, a very difficult video, because I can't even pronounce frog already off the bat. Anyways, um, beautiful packaging, as you guys have all seen by now from Vinegar Syndrome. Uh, I did post on my um, Instagram and my TikTok the, about the misspellings, which you guys are, I'm sure, all aware of now. But we'll take a look at the, the slip here. Love the embossed um, old like Kmart sticker there. Uh, but it says Vinegar Syndrome. I had $9.97. Like I said, I want some money back on this, man, because I had paid more than that, all right? Uh, but yeah, the old Atari cartridge looking in. You got your inside uh, sleeve art there, uh, insert art. What What, what is this? Uh, your MRA case art. Uh, you got your disc inside there. The reverse art, same as the slip. But if you guys read the back of the slip, uh, where is it? Uh, top secret documents fell into his hands and real bullets started flying. Now he's Gene Pursued. Yes, they, they, they spelt G-E-I-N-G -E instead of Bean. Uh, and then you have uh, the sentence starts with Ant. They're not playing around instead of and. They're not playing around. Uh, but no one will believe his incredible story in face instead of in fact. <laughs> you got in face. <laughs> There's only one person left that can save him. Uh, I don't know. You got like three misspellings on the back there and everything, but uh, you know, whatever. It is what it is. It doesn't affect the quality of the film or the transfer or the rest of the packaging, which uh, again is this like magnetic clip case, um, like they did with Beastmaster. You got your booklet in here. It says game over on the bottom. Nice uh, thick booklet. This is uh, originally uh, Universal Pictures release here, so a nice uh, studio. Big studio release for Vinegar Syndrome. I feel like I can actually take my time and breathe over here on YouTube with you guys as opposed to rushing through those freaking TikTok videos. I feel so pressured and um, like I got to get through stuff so quickly. And over here we can just chill and relax and, and get to know each other, right? But uh, again, very awesome release. We'll, we'll keep that out because I'll go over the features here in a minute. But if you guys haven't seen this movie, I'll, I'll keep this pretty damn short and simple for you guys uh this takes place during like the cold war soviet union type stuff uh you have some stuff at the beginning with that and uh yeah it's pretty much about this kid uh named what was his name in this movie uh i already I already forgot his name davy uh henry thomas's character plays davy uh he's got this imaginary friend uh named jack flack which me and my son both thought they were saying Jack Black. Anyway. Like, no, no, it's Jack Black. Uh, who quite resembles his dad, who's in the military. He's like a staff sergeant or something like that. Um, not like an active, like, you know... Um, uh, military guy like on the field or you know on battle or anything but uh, they got kind of this distant relationship going on so his imaginary friend looks just like his dad played by the same guy and uh, they they go on these missions together in, in his head and he's uh, you know obsessed with these games these war games that he's created and then uh, towards the beginning of the film uh, he's at this building at this uh, gaming company's office and while he's there, 
some bad guys are there. They kill one of the, the workers or whatever, and as he's dying, he gives uh, the boy a cartridge and uh, has some secret government documents or something on it. They don't really even say in the movie what is on this, but it has like an extra microchip uh, in this Atari cartridge for Cloak and Dagger, the game. And uh, I didn't find out until the features. Uh, it's something to do with like a stealth um, plane or something, I, I guess. I, but I don't think they say it during the film, to be honest. Uh, maybe I missed it. I don't know. But uh, after that, he's just being pursued by the bad guys the whole movie. He's teamed up with this uh, little girl who's his friend. She's like way younger than him, and I don't know why they're friends, but you know, whatever. Um, you do have uh, William Forsythe in here, and one of his first roles, if not his first like major film role, uh, plays Morris, who's like this uh, gaming expert. Uh, owns this uh, or works at the store selling video games and he's supposed to be a really good gamer which in fact uh, they had to like teach him about games because he didn't know anything about games going into this movie that's a pretty interesting fact you learn by watching features guys all right um but yeah william Forsyth from like devil's rejects man playing fucking wydell as a matter of fact i was feeling kind of alone. love his character in that just uh, to see him in this role as this nerdy like computer guy is just crazy. <laughs> I know he's not uh, always played roles like Devil's Rejects, but that's what I know him from the most. Uh, but he, he does good in this as well. And, and, hold on, you even have Ted White. Yes, this fucking Ted White here. <laughs> Jason Voorhees himself from Friday the 13th Part 4, right? Uh, final chapter? Uh, doing uh, stunt work and stuff in here as well. And if you guys look at Ted White's resume, his his stunt career, that guy's been in a lot of, or been involved with a lot of fucking movies, like Fast and Furious movies and all kinds of uh, stuff that you wouldn't think, you know, Ted White. Uh, yeah, so that was pretty cool too. So you got Wydell from Devil's Rejects, you got Ted White, freaking Jason Voorhees uh, in here. And this is only rated, I believe, PG, right? Um, yeah, uh, PG, but remember guys, this is 80s PG, okay? This isn't today's PG. There's blood in here, there's people getting murdered, there's uh, stuff said to him from the bad guys, like them saying, I'm gonna kill you, and stuff like that, the... There's no way, like, this would be an R rating today, like, there, this is when it, when, when it work. Uh, but yeah, anyways, he's being chased by the bad guys the whole movie, and they gotta escape certain scenarios and things like that to keep them from getting a hold of this cartridge and everything. I would've just gave him the damn cartridge, like, fuck it, you know? Um, <laughs> that's just me. I don't know. Uh, lots of lots of good action, suspense. The acting's great throughout, especially for an '84 uh, movie. I keep saying '84. Let me make sure that's right. Yeah, '84. Um, I just enjoyed this movie, and so did my kid. And he didn't think he was gonna like it because he doesn't like movies from like the '70s or '80s. He only likes newer movies. But we've watched a few from the '80s, and he ended up liking them. And I told him he would. So, <laughs> and he ended up liking this one quite a bit. Uh, just, just a really good, uh, throwback to the, the beginning times of gaming when Atari first became popular, uh, like I said, really good chase sequences, uh, some really bad, bad guys though, like, these guys aren't very good at their job, <laughs> uh, I don't know, and then you have, uh, some secret re reveals in here as well on who's good and who's bad, so, I uh, don't want to give anything away for those who haven't seen the film, though. I highly recommend this one, though, guys. If you guys haven't picked this edition up, this edition is packed full of features. Again, beautiful packaging from them. I highly recommend grabbing this if you can. Uh, if nothing else, uh, there is, like, a two-pack with, like, Cloak and Dagger and I think, like, The Wizard as well, which is another great film from back 
in the day. Um, and it has a standalone DVD release too and other stuff uh, or stream it if you can. Uh, but watch this fucking movie because it's, it's, it's just good. And it takes you back to that time. Like I said, it's, it's a product of its time for sure. And just brings back so much nostalgia. And it's just, just a fun, fun watch. Uh, I, I, I very highly recommend Again, this is from 1984, runs 101 minutes. This is, of course, region, well, it says region A on here, but the 4K should be region free. Uh, the Blu-ray is probably region A. Uh, but yeah, features on here. You get, uh, of course, the 4K disc, nothing on that one. You do get, uh, on the Blu-ray, you get commentary with uh, screenwriter Tom Holland, moderated by filmmaker Joe Lynch. You get Konami Codes and Cult Classics Programming, Cloak and Dagger, brand new extended of making of documentary featuring interviews with Tom Holland, Michael Murphy, uh, Jackie Birch, and uh, Todd Hallowell, Alan Curtis. Uh, yeah, I did watch that. I think it ran about um, like a half an hour or something, um, like 28 minutes, half hour. And it's pretty good. Uh, it starts out with Tom Holland, and he talks about how he got started in the industry and everything. I'm talking about, I believe it was The Beast Within was like his first major uh, picture that got released. Uh, I think he was just a writer on it. But um, yeah, really good making of documentary on that. You get some... Where are we at? Loud and Clear, brand new interview with actor Henry Thomas. Pretty good interview with him. I did watch that as well. And he just talks about his um, career a little bit and everything, and it's 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 a pretty decent watch. I, I I don't remember the time on that one. You get an archival interview with director Richard Franklin. You get an archival Q and A with Richard Franklin from 2001. Extensive behind the scenes still gallery locations feature it then and now. I did watch that as well. Um, a lot of stuff really looked the same. I was impressed on how much stuff stayed the same i believe this was out in texas somewhere um you get cloak and dagger the Atar atari arcade game a mini doc by vintage arcade gal and multiple tv spots i did watch the arcade game thing and uh it was originally called like age of x or something and it wasn't um associated with the movie at first the game came out first and then universal approached them on uh kind of making it into the cloak and dagger game and there's even a scene in the film where um Davey calls um, Jack Flack. He says uh, something about used to be Agent X or something like that. Uh, so, yeah, here, stuff outside. Um, really, really good release, guys. Great picture quality audio. Um, just fantastic all around. High, high recommend from me. But um, to each their own. If you want to pick it up, pick it up. If not, then that's uh, it's your choice. So, again, I'm going to make my reviews nice and short and sweet. I'm not going to waste a lot of your guys' time. You guys have other stuff to do. Um, yeah, enjoy the rest of your day, night, morning, whatever it is uh, when you're watching this. And uh, as always, guys, peace, love, and happiness to each and every one of you. And uh, later.